Hi, I'm Phil Koval and I will explain today about uh, Immersive Web of Twins. So who am I? I'm a French uh, engineer from uh, Brittany and uh, I've been involved into open source software for a long time and currently part of the Mozilla Reps program. I've been involved into uh, industry in the past, mostly embedded Linux, and I'm currently available. So you can reach me at uh, pearl.org slash rzr where you can see a previous uh, presentation or demonstration and I'm currently available for cooperation or creative jobs. So where are we coming from? I want to speak about some concept from the 50 somebody prototyped uh, personal uh, theater so this is uh, the ancestor of virtual reality also in uh, Haiti the sci-fi cyberpunk author uh, William Gibson mentioned about cyberspace where people could interact outside reality and one game changer is a Doom uh, first person shooter game which can be installed on a PC and provide a very intense experience. Then a couple of years later the 3D went online with a virtual uh, reality modeling language and X3D, X3D evolved after the years but the integration wasn't that smooth because you need to install an extra plugin inside your browser so there were no major commercial success. Uh, Second Life is a, is a game which was native and not on the web which uh, was quite interesting because people were able to create content and share them through the game. And then the WebGL uh, API in the browser provided the JavaScript to get accelerated uh, 3D in the browser. So that integration issue has been gone and we were, there were many devices on the market like mobile phone which are shipping uh, orientation sensors so you can put this into a, a cardboard uh, VR uh, DIY headset and you can move the mobile and the orientation sensor will update uh, the camera view so from this you can create also augmented reality application like Pokemon Go which are just uh, 3D content over a 2D uh, stream from the camera. So let's talk about openness of uh, immersive reality so Two major projects is uh, I want to mention is uh, OpenX, so it's a standard from the Kronos group that wants to solve the fragmentation between augmented reality and virtual reality uh, drivers and uh, top level uh, layers for creating a middleware of application. So you have an input uh, supplementation for it, which is uh, Monado from Linux from Collabora which is using uh, open and mounted display. And similarly, on the web, we have the same uh, high-level API to provide abstraction to device or application. <coughs> so the sensor from the sixth degree of freedom, which is indicating the position of the users, and uh, the controllers to pick uh, the or interact uh, with uh, objects. So in the end, you can create applications that can run on different devices, on different browsers, and Firefox Reality is one of the browsers which is implementing the WebXR application through the Navigator XR object. So how to get into a WebXR application? So if you have a VR headset and it's probably supporting a web browser, if it's not, you can install Firefox Reality or even on a mobile phone, you can use a Cardbox uh, uh, VR headset and using the orientation sensor, you can use a 3D content and it will move at the same uh, speed you are moving your head. And if you are using this uh, on a regular browser, you can still see the 3D world, but you don't have this immersive uh, feature. But you can emulate uh, the sensor you have on the uh, VR headset using an emulator extension. So that can be also useful for a developer to create a web XR application. You can use a high level framework. So the lowest one is the WebGL for the OpenGL and uh, JavaScript. Then you have the SynGraph using 3GS which is based on the WebGL and A-Frame is based on the 3GS scene graph and it provides some custom uh, web component to create a 3D scene like if you were writing uh, HTML code using tags so the Haybox tags for instance is just a cube another framework is Babylon GS for Microsoft it's based uh, on uh, WebGL so you have decent performance also and I want to speak about the GLTF uh, format which is specified by Kronos also it's compressing the assets to make them uh, easy uh, publishable on the web. So it's a GP for 3D. And uh, you can use uh, this uh, in a JSON structure with compressed uh, geometry. And uh, 
Render3D is supporting uh, 3D GLTF export. So the web as a platform, as we know, is not only flat, it's not only for 2D documents, it can be 3D, and you have some immersive uh, feature, which is uh, WebXR, which is superseding uh, the WebVR, and it's dynamic because you can create a script application using JavaScript, and it's programmable and interoperable with uh, web services. So the web is transversal, you can jump from one world to another, People, different people from different cultures can interact also, and you can also int uh, interact with a connected device. So let's talk about uh, Internet of Things. So what we are talking here is about a connected device that can be used on the internet. Uh, that's another word for interface for accessing a sensor value or changing some actuator's value. Now the Web of Things is a specification from the W3C uh, working group which is providing uh, some uh, commodities to describe the things and make them uh, accessible on the World Wide Web. Mozilla made an impromptu supplementation called the Web Things and uh, now let me mention about uh, the digital twin concept it can be uh, defini defined as a live replica of a physical entity this means we have a model which is moving at the same time as a real object uh, web of Twin experiment is something I made to try to bind uh, the Web of Things to the external reality. So I've been using the Web Things, uh, Web of Things uh, API and the A-Frame framework for the rendering. I made uh, this uh, robot from a couple of uh, motors, so I can control each motor individually. So on this dashboard, I'm changing the angle of the mot servo motors and it's updating in the real world and also in the 3D world. So this robot is made of different robots, so if I'm moving from different angles, the robot will move uh, uh, the claw here, and I can change the rot orientation of each part of the robot. At the same time, I have this uh, 3D model, which is also uh, updated in the background. So both are working at the same time because they are connected to the same uh, WebSync gateway, and uh, it's not that smooth because this is just the uh, order of the angle of each motor. So it's not a smooth transition. If I have running on a mobile phone, you can uh, see different uh, orientation. And you can also use a, <coughs> a VR headset and using uh, the embedded browser, you can look at uh, the world like if you were um, viewing it on a flat uh, 2D desktop and you can switch to the immersive web where you can look around the object and uh, see if there is any collision or if this is moving uh, as desired. So let me talk about uh, the WebSync uh, platform. So it's a smartphone software you can uh, use home to control all your device. Uh, all the devices are connected to a gateway and you have total control. There is no third party cloud involved. Everything is made with privacy by design and you control it everything from a UI dashboard which is very simple to create a basic automation. And from it's uh, extensible so you can support uh, new devices or new protocol and there is of 100 uh, community contribution. So everything was possible because it was made on a the simplified version of the Web of Things description from W3C. Another demonstration using a Web Sync and a VR. So I'm playing with some sensor and I'm uh, looking at uh, different shapes and the uh, 3D model is updated at the same time. So you can use a uh, different headset uh, and uh, having this uh, augmented reality a view using the exo kit uh, from Magic Leap. And also, I made uh, another application which is uh, uh, like uh, another view for the gateway. So, what you see or this control on the left is a dashboard of Mozilla Gateway when I have all different switch controlling different color of uh, what I have on my Raspberry Pi, I have some sensor and so on. And I have this uh, switch which I can control this fan and I made a, another switch uh, here which is uh, also 
viewing the 3D. This is the same, uh, the same uh, dashboard, but in a 3D world. So I have this uh, MQTT smart outlet, and if I connect, if I can press on it, it will toggle on my uh, plasma lamp. So all everything is connected from different perspective, and. Uh, this is just uh, an immersive uh, dashboard where if you have a, a 3D uh, VR headset you can jump into this uh, virtual dashboard where you can get uh, access to different uh, controls and uh, some monitoring. So here I have this uh, a do like a, a dome where I can look around all my switches and decide to uh, interact uh, with uh, some of them. Another one is using the the camera stream to as a background from the 3D DOM. Let's move on. So how this is possible? So it's pretty simple actually because from a sensor you are I'm providing some web API using the WebSync API and it's providing a real-time web socket or HTTP uh, verbs where I can connect uh, this thing to a gateway and uh, then I can share in a secure way my device uh, to the internet using uh, a web token. Then another XR application can listen to the update of the actual thing and update uh, the 3D model accordingly. So it works in both direction and you can use this uh, component as an example. So another simple example here so I made a, also um, I have the gateway running on the Raspberry Pi and on top of it I have uh, this extra board with uh, some extra sensor like uh, the temperature and I have also um, a, a lamp which is a matrix LED where I can change some properties of my lamp like the message uh, properties which is updating this uh, text uh, scrolling welcome to mid graphic meetings and uh, my uh, next uh, job is out. Can I connect uh, this uh, smart uh, light bulb? So it doesn't work this way because it's a Bluetooth uh, mesh. So I had to write an adapter and connect uh, the adapter to the dashboard. Then it scans the device. I can add the new device. And then it appeared uh, like uh, another thing. So if I press on this. Uh, uh, shortcut it will toggle it on and I can change uh, some specific uh, properties like uh, the brightness of the lamp and it will be updated at the same time I can change also the color so I made a 3d uh, application so it's basically uh, a digital twin of uh, my uh, lamp so if I'm changing one of its property it will be updated at the same time so to view this, uh, you can use a, a VR headset. And uh, if you don't have any, you can uh, get this uh, super cheap uh, cardboard where you put your mobile on it. And uh, using the mobile sensor, it will uh, display the right uh, uh, camera. So if you need to switch to VR mode, then you have two different view for each eye. And if you have uh, this uh, extension in the browser, you can also simulate uh, your uh, sensor position. So if I'm getting access to my headset here, I can change the uh, orientation of the headset so the display will be updated uh, like if I was moving around. If you have other device with uh, controllers, you can also trigger some events uh, on the controllers button that can be useful to create an uh, um, interactive application. So now let me share how does it work. So I have a HTML5 here. So if I'm looking at the source code, I imported this A-frame uh, uh, library. This means that I'm able to use cu custom uh, web component and describe the scene composed of a sphere, which is a light bulb and the cylinder for the bottom, the screw of the light bulb. And here I have the color property where so this is what I'm changing and those two keywords which are WebSync and Properties. So WebSync is this uh, 
web component and the web properties is uh, the binding uh, function to adapt the web things uh, update to the XR uh, view. So on in the update function for different uh, properties of our thing, I can uh, decide to update uh, the color if I'm changing the on property and I can set it to white when it's on and to gray when it's off. That's fairly easy and uh, if I want to change the color properties I, it's, uh, here, it's super easy because the schema are aligned so if I'm changing the, the color value from the model it will change and for the brightness I'm using the roughness which is quite similar. So this component is open source you can have a look at it if you want. Another last demonstration using uh, Mozilla Hubs. So Hubs is a um, meeting platform for where people can join a in a virtual world and have uh, some uh, live chat using uh, WebRTC so you can talk together using voice and each uh, user is uh, represented by its avatar and you can uh, move in different direction, evolve in the world, the audio is personalized and uh, both, are, both users here on mobile and on the desktop are sharing the same environment but it can scale to many different users. You can add your own custom assets so I made this uh, model of this uh, small uh, house uh, toy and uh, on this house I have some sensor when I'm moving the house uh, in different orientation it will update uh, the, the model position in the virtual world at the same time. So to do this on my roof of this uh, real house I have a Raspberry Pi which ship uh, the sense art sensor with uh, the accelerometer, gyroscopic and the magnetics so I can know the direction, the angle to the north. So if I'm moving in a different uh, orientation, the angle will uh, slowly uh, change and slowly converge to the actual position to the north. So if you want more details uh, about this experiment, uh, you can link, um, you can check this link, pearl.org slash of twins, and your feedback is really valuable to me because this is uh, just uh, some uh, small step experiment I'm doing over the time and uh, I want to make it uh, easy so your feedback uh, can be available. You can check previous demonstration and uh, also the source code, uh, most of it is open source. And if you have any question, I am in the LG, M meeting room so you can uh, ask me on matrix now or later online thanks for watching